I'm E.B. Sanders, career coach for Creative Types, and yeah, it's 2020. It is the start of a new year and a new decade. So how do you make 2020 the year of your success, your best year ever, the year that you've done all the things, moved the needle, been the best you? It all starts with goals. It starts with goal setting. It starts with really being clear on what you want so you can then figure out how to get there. This starts with a little reverse engineering and just a few steps. Step one, first take a step back and look at your life as a whole. And then close your eyes and envision who you want to be in December of 2020. Notice I didn't say what you want to be doing who you want to be. Those are two very different things. Step two, you then need to ask yourself one specific question. Who do you need to be to make that version of you in December 2020 come to life? Who do you need to be to make it happen? Again, you need to really examine who you need to be, not what you need to do, because just going through the motions and ticking off tasks and doing the things won't get you where you want to be in the same way that being that person, embodying that ideal life that you want, will. Step three, you need to set SMART goals. And not SMART as in intelligent, but SMART as in S-M-A-R-T. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard this before. But for those that haven't, let's go through what those letters mean because they really are an effective way to set goals for genuinely anything, whether you're trying to, you know, train for a marathon or get a promotion. So the S is for specific. Your goal needs to be specific. So not just, I want to have a better career in 2020, but I want to be SVP of the Western region specific. The more specific the easier it is to create a task list to get you where you need to be because you'll be really crystal clear on where that is. You'll be able to set those milestones. You'll be able to do the things you need to do for that specific thing. When setting you know, your goal, your specific goal, remember all of your W's, right? Your who, what, where, when, and why. If you can answer all of those questions in terms of your specific goal, you are golden. You are set. M is measurable. Your goal needs to be measurable. You need to have metrics to know that you're meeting milestones, to know that you're making progress. And the reason you need to know how much progress that you're making is so that you know how far you've come, how far you've got left to go, and that you're meeting specific markers that you know are going to get you to that thing. A is for achievable. Not your goal as a whole, because truly anything is achievable, right? But it's this idea of smaller chunks, clearly achievable goals along the path to the bigger goal. These are little chunks, things you can bite off in small baby steps. These allow you to gain momentum and make continuous progress. It helps so that you don't become disheartened by this giant goal that you've set for yourself because you're attaining smaller goals as you go along. So let's say your goal was to get this specific promotion. There's going to be things you need to learn, things you need to do, contacts you need to make, maybe certificates you need to get. Those are the smaller achievable goals on the path to your big one. R is for relevant. You need to make sure that your goals are relevant in both the short and long term for you in terms of your bigger picture. In terms of your bigger picture, that's completely relative, but in terms of your career, there's going to be specific goals that are going to be relevant to your field, your position, your role, your career, your desired outcome. You need to make sure that those goals that you're setting are relevant to that. T is for time-based, time-bound. What this means is that you have to set a deadline. So this isn't just, I want to be SVP of the Western region sometime in the future. This is, I want to be SVP of the Western region by December 20th, 2020. This again allows you to create milestones, which act as a motivating force for you to reach these goals. These milestones allow you to engage in specific metrics again. You can create a timeline. Otherwise, this goal could go on forever without ever quite being met. If you're in a traditional corporate environment, 
it's a great idea to use the timeline of fiscal quarters, right? Q1, Q2, so on, so on. Because companies tend to give raises, promotions, bonuses, those types of things on that cycle. So if you've got a goal in mind in terms of getting a new title and a new raise, it helps to be on their cycle when you want that. Even if you're not in a traditional corporate environment, sticking to fiscal quarters as a you know base timeline allows you to really own the fact that you are your own boss. But no matter how you organize it and do what's best for you, what makes the most sense for you, having a deadline allows you to have specific timeframes to work towards. You know what you need to do and by when. It'll be a real driving force for you. So that's SMART, right? S-M-A-R-T. So step three is setting a SMART goal. Step four is engaging help. Once you know who you want to be and when you want to be there, you need help. You need to engage your work wife, a career coach, your spouse, your network, your friends, your family, your board of directors, your women's group, your squash club, anyone and everyone who can help you reach the goal you've set. Simply start by letting them know that you've set this goal and be specific with it. Don't just tell them, oh, you know, I'm gunning for a promotion this year. Tell them what specifically you're going after, where, when, and why, and ask them to help you. Ask them who they know that you should speak to. Have they done a similar sort of jump? Ask them for their advice. If they don't have advice, ask them who they know, again, that you should connect with. Expand your network. Let them know you're going to need their support. You need their support. Whether you think you do or you don't, you need support during a major goal setting push. Unfortunately, a lot of people, and especially women, feel that you have to do it on your own. That you know you have to be self-made. You have to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. But there is no such thing as being self-made. Nobody exists in a vacuum. Somewhere along the way, someone introduced them to someone they needed to talk to, spent some money with their business, gave them advice. Nobody does this alone. You are not alone. Don't feel you have to do this alone. This will happen better and bigger than you ever imagined when you enlist help. Now, step five. So once your goal's all set and you've enlisted your support network, it's time to check in with yourself. You want to do weekly check-ins and keep a wins list. There's a link to what I'm talking about there, here. Do monthly reviews and planning. These don't have to be really long and involved and intense. It can be two questions. It can be, where do I want to go and how far have I gotten getting there? Or it can be as in-depth and introspective as you want it to be. It can take you 10 minutes or four hours, whatever you need, whatever feels good for you. But continuous check-ins, check-ups will allow for course corrections to make sure you're staying on track with your goal. And honestly, doing these checkups will help you reach your goal all the quicker. So those are the five steps you need to really be implementing as we get started here in 2020. Remember, as you embark on this journey for 2020, that you need to not only make time to engage with these goals, with the extra projects and initiatives and work you're going to, need to take on to reach these goals, but that you still need to be focused on your original work that you're already doing. But you also need to make sure that you're taking time to take care of yourself. Setting big goals can be really exciting and people can get really lost in the moving forward and all of the momentum and sort of forget that they need to take care of themselves. And this does mean, you know, time management. It means making sure you're feeling good and getting all the things done that you want to do, but also taking time for yourself, your family, your friends, your loved ones, making sure that you are carving out time to just be you while you're doing all of this extra work. And it truly is going to be extra work. So again, you need to make sure you're making time to do the work you're already assigned to do, all the extra work you need to do to reach this goal, and the time to take care of yourself. Now here's to an amazing 2020 and the person you are going to be a year from now. I'm E.B. Sanders, career coach for creative types, and I cannot wait to hear your goals. Definitely comment, reply, 
hit me on a DM. Let me know what is the big career goal you're setting for yourself in 2020 and how can I help? Here's to a new year filled with amazing new adventures. Happy New Year.